Hey guys, how you doing? Derby here. In this video, we're going to be covering the Wanderer's Palace. Now, this dungeon is honestly one of my favourite end game, in quotation marks, dungeon. Because quite literally, it's really fun. And it's full of tomberries. And of course, who doesn't love tomberries? So let's get started. So as you saw, as you may have saw at the beginning of this dungeon, um, a couple of like warriors, a couple of NPCs ran towards the left. You want to completely ignore that for a reason and you will see why in a second. So you want to run around the corner over here and take out these tombrees and the uh, bronze buzzard. If you want to speed run the dungeon you obviously can and you can skip every single monster here but for demonstration purposes we won't be skipping this uh, the tombrees. So kill the pack here and as you can see at the far far end of this little path over here a gigantic tombree is following us that's right there are many of these gigantic tombrees across this dungeon and they are potentially the guardians of this uh, palace and you want to avoid them at all costs because if they catch up to you they will stab you and hit you for a lot of damage and if you are prepared enough they will honestly kill you the, um, the tombree stab range is huge and I mean huge so you want to have as much as a distance as possible from the tombrees themselves which is why we decided to completely skip that area and completely you know just move on and again if you want to skip the bond the bronze buzzards you can so now we have the pudgels pug pudgels and um you just kill them it's that simple really and here you're meant to make sure that the tombrees don't come and if they do come as a tank you'll want to make sure that you gain enmity or hate as fast as possible and please make sure to continuously check back to see that the tombrey hasn't caught up to you <laughs> and as you can see the Tombri has finally caught up with us so we decided to carry on with the dungeon and skip every other pack that is here. Now in front of us there are two more Tombris and you can choose to either kill them or you know skip them if you want and remember if you haven't seen how to skip monsters properly please check back at my Ampador Keep Speedrun video just to get a general gist of how you go and skip packs. If the tank chooses to do so, he can run back and go and collect the treasure coffer that was in that previous room. Please note however, if you do decide to go back and get this chest for the couple of elegant bronze pieces and the coral skin, you will have to run back near the boss room and die away from us so the tank, well sorry, so the healer can then come back and then res you. And now we're on to the boss fight. Now this boss fight is just your typical avoid the AoE fight. If you get caught in one of the AoEs you will get sucked into the boss and then the boss will apply a really heavy poison dot which the healer has to try and get off you. Other than that the boss fight is rather simple as you just saw there. The range of the AoE is very very large and it is pretty hard to get out of if you get caught inside of it. So once again just avoid the AoEs, keep beating down the boss and healers if you see anyone get caught inside the AoEs please make sure to dispel their poison otherwise they will get hit for a lot of damage. The dot lasts for about 12 seconds and as you saw there unfortunately I died in the boss fight. Um, the AoE is rather lot hard and if you are suffering from slight latency issues and I know there is a problem with latency in this game um, you will get hit for it so healers please be on point for this fight and then eventually you will take out this boss honestly it's not really that hard just avoid the AoEs and once you've defeated him you'll get five elegant, um, elegant tomes of philosophy and then you can go and collect your loot and make sure to activate the door in the corner there so now we run into another little cute little tombery. Oh, they're so adorable. And, um, kill him. Yeah, it's rather sad. You have to go and kill the cuteness, I know. Or you can go skip him if you like to save the tombries. Um, run, into, run around the corner, and here we have more tombries and more pudge pudgels. And, um, kill them or skip them. But please note there are um, a few switches. In this room which you will see in a second and you have to activate them in order to progress through this dungeon and once you've killed them we now run up the stairs 
and once again we have another pack of monsters that we can kill and as you can see on the two sides of this room there are these little devices Nimion devices and you have to activate them in order to progress through the dungeon and activate the door which is right there to the right and now we have killed the pack both or two people should go and activate the doors and now we can progress through the dungeon right in front of us there is another Nimion device and in this room there are two chests on either side on the northern side of the corners one chest contains uh, I forgot what the item co is called but it's a pebble and this pebble is needed to make the black mage uh, relic prerequisite item um, this item can go on the auction house for about 40k gil because this is the only place in the dungeon or in the game where that pebble to my knowledge can drop also on the other side of the chest on the other side of the room sorry um, you can also get um, a bloody lance head and uh, I think it's the broken bow or something along those lines for the um, ranger and lancer relic weapons so as you can see there we went and got the uh, tombery we pulled him back a little bit so he can walk past us and then we ran through the middle and there are two soldiers of nims here kill them off and there's also another uh, one of these devices in this room that we have to go and activate activate the uh, the door and now there's a tombery right behind us so we have to run um, run down these stairs and take out the tombery pack which is in the middle or you can decide to skip them if you wish once again there is another nimian device right in front of us that we have to activate and the door which is right there to the north of where uh, Emma Watson is standing um, is the room to the next boss fight now on either side of this room of this little path there are tombries that w keep watch um, this chest over here drops the bloody bow rim sorry I apologize not a broken bow and, and the bloody lance head and the chest to the other side is the one that drops the pebble um, and monsters do spawn there once again um, these beetles are very easy to kill and you can just you know kill them in a few hits to this side of the room there's another di another Nimian device that we have to activate so I'm gonna run over here activate and as you can see there there's the pebble the pinprick pebble and this pebble is worth about 40k girl on the auction, or on the auction house at the time of this recording and um, we spotted the Tommy walking towards us so we decided to run into the boss room and take out the last pack here and then we buffed up and now we're gonna take out the boss so this boss fight is actually relatively annoying but thankfully now I have it completely nailed down so after you take it down the Beauvoir's life um, further enough he'll eventually summon a couple of adds the purple ad is the one that you have to take down first he causes a paralysis and um, I'll explain why in a second the white one can then cast a stone which slows you down and the green one I think just does a physical attack on you now what happens during the phase is that the boss will target one person in the room and all of his minions will slowly then go up and attack him and if you get caught by any of the status elements you will get killed really easily his giant cleave does a lot of damage so in this one a blue bavoir spawns and this one heals both the, t um, both the main boss and the rest of these little bavoirs so you want to take out the blue one in the second phase then the purple one then the white one and then the green one so remember purple does um, a paralysis white then does a stone blue heals and the green one I believe just does a physical or a magic based attack I haven't confirmed that properly and again we want to take it down again and this time he will summon another set of adds and for this part of the fight the tank will want to group up every all of the little adds and if you have um, a major class with you you want to go and limit break the entire arena once you have been targeted throughout this fight you will then want to run around the circumference of this room to ensure that both the adds and the boss does not catch up to you otherwise you will get killed and the, that's the fight it's honestly that simple so pick up the loop and now we can progress through this dungeon and also remember the order in which we kill them blue purple white and then once you've gone out the door for the boss room um, you'll run into another pack of monsters you can kill them or skip them if you wish 
And further up ahead there are um, I believe two more tomberries and there's also a treasure coffer which drops a bite sized pudding uh, pet that can follow you around. <laughs> it's really really cute. And also watch out for the giant tombri that follows you behind you. <laughs> it's really really hilarious. So we decided just to carry on running up and find the next pack of tombries. The uh, giant tombri that's following us will eventually stop following you. And then there are two nim devices that we can go and activate. And now we are going to go back and kill off the tombries and the soldiers of nims. Now this is one of the most interesting boss fights in the game. Tombri King. Now as you can see there is a tombri on the far side of the corner. And he slowly starts walking up towards the tank or other people in the party. What the range class has to do or uh, a dragoon using his piercing talent ability has to go and take out these uh, tombries because the tombries can uh, hit really really hard and once they get aggressive and they have aggro towards someone they their speed really steps up like they do in most Final Fantasy games. Each time you kill a tombri, um the tombri king will gain one stack of this razor attack and basically for every stack that the Tombri has when he uses his attack um, he will deal the tank for a thousand damage per stack which means you want to kill um, a certain amount of Tombris which correlates to the amount of maximum HP that the tank has so for our party the maximum amount of Tombris we can ever kill is five and if you ever go beyond killing five tombries, you then have to go and start kiting the tombries. So range classes, you have to be on your guard and really take out the tombries as fast as you can. And more and more and more and more tombries eventually start spawning to the point where even I had to go and help out the tank to get um, a tombri off him. You want to use your limb break as fast as possible as the melee DD. We had a tiny bit of lag here, but eventually you will take him down. This boss fight was really, really fun, and it's really that simple. So hopefully this has helped you guys do the Wanderer's Palace, and hopefully you guys get the Dark Light Kite Shield, because this is a really, really good shield for the Paladin. And, um, well, I'll talk to you guys later.